everybody. Welcome back to Tomcat Air Guns. What I've got in front of me today is a whole mess of stuff from Atlas Bipods. I've got everything from stickers to product books, bipods, feet, extensions, poker chips, patches, and Picatinny rails, and even this little thing right here, which is actually a mirror. <laughs> We're not here to talk about mirrors, though. We are here to talk about bipods. In particular, today I want to talk about the V8 and the PSR bipods. So guys, this is the V8 bipod, and this is the PSR. This one's also known as the BT-10, and since it has a quick-release lever, it's a BT-10 LW-17. This is the PSR. It's also known as the BT-46 LW-17 because of that quick-release lever. And from over there, you probably can't tell the difference. And as I was coming up through shooting, and progressing through, I started with the V8 and I ended up with the PSR. Which one do I like better? The PSR. And that's the one I'm really going to be highlighting today, but I'm not going to skip over the V8. I'm going to show you how to tell the difference. I'm going to tell you the weaknesses of the V8 versus the PSR. Both of these bipods are going to be in the 5 inch to 9 inch range. The V8 is going to cost $280. The PSR, $320. The V8 comes in with a weight of 12.7 ounces, whereas the PSR comes in at 13.6 ounces. One more difference that you can't see is that the V8's made out of um, 6061 T6 aluminum and the PSR is made out of 7075 T6 aluminum. You can get an Atlas bipod for a little bit cheaper if you get rid of this quick, uh, quick release mount. They have two other options. Uh, one option is a, uh, like a flathead screw type of clamp-on style for Picatinny rails, or if you don't have a Picatinny rail, you can get a, uh, it's kind of like a blank slate, a starting point, and you can customize it to whatever you're working with. Say it's like an Arca system or something like that. But the top is made to accept any 17S style mount lever system. All right, guys, here's the V8 and here's the PSR. As I said before, the legs on the, P on the V8 spin the legs on the PSR do not. The other way to tell the difference between these two is this little bump right here. Now what that is is a forward aft limiting boss. What the forward aft limiting boss is about is loading into your rifle. When you're pushing in to your rifle to take your shot up against a barrier or whatever and the guys from the military called up Atlas and they said listen we're having a problem with this. All of our bipods seem to be like push back. They seem to be, you know, it's it, they're slop in there, there's something we don't like. This is that leaning into it type of slop that they wanted gone. So the PSR came about. This is one of the things I like about Atlas bipods. You can grab them with one hand, slap them on there, it's great. And here, enter the forward aft limiting boss. Now I'm gonna loosen that up all the way and you can see it's a lot tighter. Those forward aft limiting bosses are taking all that strain and, and, and just removing it. It's gone. So that's one of the weaknesses of the V8. Another weakness to the, B, the V8 is because the legs spin, they have a tendency to walk as you're shooting. I'm pushing on this rifle and this one here is just spinning and it's, it's allowing the rifle to move or this way one leg skids, the other one just rotates. And that kind of kind of sucks, <laughs> to be honest with you. So those are the weaknesses of the V8 versus the PSR. There is a way to fix this leg, this foot walking and twisting issue, and that's to get yourself a set of spiked uh, feet and install your spiked feet on there. Um, spiked feet cost 50 bucks. You can get spikes, skis, cleats or spiked cleats and they're all fifty dollars each additionally you can get leg extensions now leg extensions are also fifty dollars a piece and they accept all the feet and they are even stackable so you can put one in front of the you know on top of the other on top of the other until you get the height that you want but i'm going to show you another trick a little bit later on in the video that'll get you all the height you need so stay tuned for that so moving on guys i am going to focus on the psr rather than the V8 because I think it is a better model. Um, in fact, some shooters out there look at the V8 as being a Gen 1 and the PSR as being a Gen 2. 
Real quick before we get started on installation, I wanted to point out this uh, four point thumb screw. And that again is the way to tell the difference between a Gen 1 and a Gen 2. A Gen 1 is gonna have everything the same except it's gonna have a five point system instead of a four point. And this is a definite upgrade guys. Um, I've had both, this is the way to go. In order to attach it to your rifle, you've got the quick release lever here that has this little button lock on it. And when you reach the end here, it snaps in place and it won't come loose without depressing that button. Now you want to be careful when you attach this to your rifle that you don't put too much tension on there because that button can be a little difficult to push and then move out um, if you have too much tension on there. You could be kind of really struggling. The legs adjust by pushing this little button right here. You push that in and you've got 90, 45 front and back, and then stowed front and back as well. It's nice, it snaps into place, and there is, as far as that connection goes, there's no, there's no slop in there at all. The legs will um, extend and retract. You pull down on the little top hat design, that's what I call it, the top hat. Um, give that a tug down, and you can go to any of the predetermined positions. So you're not infinitely adjustable with the Atlas bipod. Let it snap into place. Sometimes you can go too far or, or not far enough and you gotta just kinda jiggle a little bit and it'll snap right into place on you. In order to adjust for tilt and swivel, you've got the little thumb screw right here. Um, now this one's already loosened up, but that's gonna give you, I think it's 30 degrees of swivel and it's a tension swivel. It's not super loose, uh, but there's no slop either, at least on the PSR. And then you have some tilt. Now one thing I've noticed with the PSR versus the V8 is on the tilt feature, it wants to snap it back to that 90 degree home position. So you got a little bit of extra, I guess, tension, if you will, a little something extra to fight to get to the position you want. On the V8, you can tilt it and it's just gonna stay there. It doesn't really care. Tilt that way, same thing, it's under tension. I can do it by hand because it's already loose. Um, so here's the PSR and it's locked in place on a tilt as well. So it's totally doable. Here we are at the bench and I think that's a pretty important position to illustrate the bipod from because a lot of shooting is done from the bench. So here we are, let's go through some of the motions. Uh, let's say I've got an off angle bench. It's tilted out of whack for some reason. Um, I loosen up this thumb screw. Uh, bring, <laughs> there goes my level. Uh, bring it back and tighten it down. So it seemed like it kind of went back a little bit, which I mentioned earlier about the PSR having that little, almost a spring tension, like it wants to go back home. So we'll get that back into position. And yeah, it just wants to go back a little bit. But if I tighten down that thumb screw while I'm doing this, I can fight against it and I can find my level and it'll stay there too. But I'm kind of maxed out with just this, oh, what is that, about an inch height? I'm kind of maxed out on my uh, adjustment already. You know what, I'm kind of noticing something here. I'm tightening down this thumb screw quite a bit. And it's not that hard. There's definitely like a significant amount of resistance on tilt, but if you're looking for like a lockout tilt option, um, this isn't really gonna do it for you. There, there is, like I said, there's a significant amount of tension there, but I would have expected a little bit more. So next up, let's take a look at the pan feature. Now, I'm gonna tighten this down, and uh, one of the things you wanna watch for with panning with a system like this, where pan and tilt are controlled by this knob, goes through the whole, th whole system, is you wanna see if that comes loose when you pan your rifle back and forth, if you fight against it and if you are to break through that pan feature. And, oh, it's tight. Oh, it's tight. It's really tight um, to break that. Uh, but once you do, yep, I'm walking this screw loose. It's actually getting more and more loose as I go. Let me bring you guys in for a close look. So what you guys wanna look for is this here thumb screw. Um, I'll tighten it down. I mean, that's pretty tight. 
And now if I break through, and it's, it's stiff, guys. I mean, it is really hard to break through this. But once I do, you can see it actually unscrewing itself until it becomes so loose that it's, you know, it's pretty much, <laughs> it's really loosened up. Since these two are so closely related, pan is gonna loosen up along, or a tilt is gonna loosen up along with pan. So guys, that's pretty surprising to me. I've been using Atlas bipods for years. They're one of my favorites. And I have never noticed that until I started making this video. Um, so that should tell you something. If you use pan a lot, and you're under tension, say you're up against a, a barricade or something like that, this might be an issue for you. But if you're like me and most of your shooting is done from bench rest, you're never going to notice that. <laughs> so moving on, let's take a look at the leg extensions and uh, movements. Um, I push buttons right here, which I can get to like this and adjust for position pretty easily. Not that bad. Um, same thing on this side. It's closer, so it's even easier. Now, if I want to adjust for leg position, you know, the close side is always going to be easy, but the far side is where you might run into a little bit of issue. Now, there's a few different ways you can grab this and pull down on that, on that top hat design. I'm using the webbing here on my thumb to get to it here, um, or you can, you know, use your knuckle of your thumb here and make your adjustments that way, um, or you can actually pinch it. If you're going from full retraction to full extension, you can actually just grab your top hat and slide it all the way down on both sides and you're good to go. One of the things I really like about the Atlas bipods is the knurling on here. It is really grippy. It's going to grip your finger, your, um, your skin. It's going to really grip it and allow you to get that grab that you need to make these adjustments. You got gloves on, maybe slippery, icy, whatever. Same thing. This top hat design is going to allow you to grab that. It gives you a, a shelf to grab with a slippery or a wet glove. And it allows you to get the legs to extend how you need them to, to extend. All right, guys, here we are outside. First thing I want to mention is this rifle safe. No bullets are anywhere in the area. I won't be shooting today. First test I want to do is called loading the rifle. It's when you've got something to push up against and you're going to push into your gun to get a little bit better accuracy out of it. So I push in. And it's pretty solid. There's just, there's like a little bit of, I want to say spongy, but more of a rubbery type of take up. And I'm there. Let me bring you guys in for a closer look. So I've got my ledge here, come on rifle, push in, and you can see the take up. You can see this little bit of flex going on in the system. And that's really, it's not slop. I mean, I come back here, uh, I got a little bit of slop in the feet. That's about it. Um, so it's a really solid platform and it's just a little bit of take up. I'll tell you, it's kind of a comfortable rubbery type of feeling. Um, <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it. Um, and it's, it's a reliable, um, it's a reliable push in, you know, it's not a brick wall. It's not like bang, I just ran into a brick wall. It's a little bit of take up and it's actually pretty comfortable. I can also pan and tilt as I go. And I just got to watch because every time I do it, I'm loosening up this bolt again here. So um, just something to be aware of as a weak point. As far as an extreme angle shot, such as this, um, no problems there. In fact, this knurling comes into play at this point because, you know, this stuff is so grippy. It, it'll grab whatever you're in, whatever you're onto, it's actually going to grab it and it's going to assist you to stay very stable. Next up, let's take a look at the barricade shot. It's when you've got like a hole like this you're gonna shoot through, or you've got a wall or something that you're gonna come up on and use as a, as a brace point. Put our rifle through, come in, find our target, pop, 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 it's solid. Boy, it transfers, however solid this is, it's gonna get transferred right to your rifle. You, if the wall flexes like this one does a little bit, that's how much flex you have. This thing is solid for a barricade. What you'll notice is it's hitting right up here. You can see some little bit of leftover wood there. So it's resting right on this plate on the bipod when I come in for the barricade shot. And that's giving me all that stability because it's transferring it right to that Picatinny rail. All right, guys, here we are in the prone position. We'll go for an adjustment for tilt. And like I said, it's just got that weak point in the system where I can tilt no matter what. So no big deal. 
I go for leg extension. If I'm going for full extension, very easy. If I need to pick my point, it's a little more difficult. Yep, I almost want to come off, off trigger and do it with the other hand just to make it easier. So a little bit difficult. And finding that exact point, you can see here, I've gone past it a few times. So a little bit of difficulty there, but not overly that bad. Um, as far as adjusting the legs for position, it's just gonna be like on the bench. Um, you just gotta figure out how to get this one on the opposite side and you're good to go. Now, as far as kneeling goes or sitting goes, this bipod as it is, it wasn't really made for it. It just doesn't have the length. However, let me take you back to the shop real quick and show you a little trick. So here's my other PSR and I took the feet off and now, you know, yeah, one option is I can stack extension after extension after extension until till I get to where I need to be. But at 50 bucks for a pair, that's gonna get really expensive really fast. Not only that, but there's gonna be a little bit of slop in each one. So maybe not the best option. However, somebody along the line figured out this is a half inch uh, diameter on the inside here. So if you get yourself a half inch wooden dowel like these are, stick them right in there, you've now got yourself the height that you need. Little note on that, dowels don't just come in pine or poplar, they also come in oak like this one is, you can get walnut, you can get all kinds of stuff. So if you get a hard wood, you're gonna get a little more stiffer leg out of it. And it might just, it might just last you a little bit longer. Let's see how this works outside. So here we are with my sticks in place. I'm not gonna go over performance because you're literally using dowels for, uh, to make this thing work and do what you want. But now I've got a kneeling shot. And if I didn't cut them too long, which I kind of did, so I'm pointed up, um, I can also have the option for a sitting shot. So I'm gonna lob these off a little bit and bring them down. But let's say they were a little bit too short. I still have the option of extending the legs like this. Or if I cut them even shorter, or I want a quick attach type of system, whatever, I can use those leg extensions on here. Give me another three inches or so. I want to talk about using this bipod as a handle. Um, it is solid, so if you come in for to use this as a handle, it's going to work out really well for you. Um, it's very solid. If you come up against a post or something like that you want to use it on, then you're going to run into this problem with the pan letting go on you and it's something you got to be aware of. Now, if you were to say, have a spike, which I'm not going to put on because this is my deck, um, you can come in and you can spike into that tree. It's going to be even more stable of a platform for you. And if you take up this pan feature, it actually would allow you with that point spiked into the tree, um, it's going to allow you to kind of see around something even. It gives you just this little, uh, a little step out from the post and you can come in, I can come in for a shot all the way, almost 90 degrees, almost 45 degrees anyway. So there's different, there's pros and cons to using it like that. Now my next series of movements I'm gonna do is meant to simulate using this rifle in a more stressful environment, such as competition. So what I'm gonna do is start with the legs stowed. I'm gonna put them to 90 degrees for a barricade shot, simulate two shots, pop, pop. Bring them all the way down for a prone shot and pop, pop. And then I'm gonna put them to 45 degrees and bring them all the way in for a bench rest shot and simulate two pop, pop. So let's see how I do. In three, two, one, go. 90 degrees, barricade and pop, pop. Come down for prone, pop, pop. 45 degrees. Legs retracted, a little sticky there, and pop, pop. It's not bad. I think it's a system that once you get used to it, uh, you can be very proficient with it. My, my leg did stick. What I've found in, in a couple of takes doing this is I tend to bring the leg in and jam it too hard, and the top hat sits like that. All I have to do is that little bit, and it snaps right into place. So I'm kind of missing a little bit. Another thing I've noticed over take after take is sometimes I'm going past my 90 here and I'm locking into a 45. It's like, I think I'm there, I'm kind of expecting it to lock. And that's because the tolerance is so tight on this 
that if you don't hit your mark, you have a chance to hit the wrong mark, say the 45. Let's try it again, see how I do. In three, two, one, go. 90 degrees, locked in place. Pop, pop. Down here for prone and pop, pop. 45, locked in place. A little tug on those and pop, pop. Yep, not bad. All right guys, it's pros and cons time. Let me begin by saying, yes, I found a weakness in the Atlas Bipod system. And that was that pan feature coming loose and the kind of the weakness of the tilt feature. However, understand this as well, it's never bothered me in the years that I've owned Atlas Bipods. So to me, it's kind of a non-issue. Depends on you and you have to ask yourself this question is, is that a feature that I'm gonna use? Or do I really even care about it? So, that being said, let's move on to some other pros and cons. Uh, the V8 has a tendency to walk. And I have noticed that with my shooting and it was kind of annoying. Uh, another weakness of the V8 was supposed to be that forward aft type of, you know, the legs tilting this way and that way. I've never experienced it, never bothered me. So it's kind of like, eh. There is some slop in the legs when they're extended. And I would like to see that you know, addressed, maybe taken out just a little bit, tightened up in there. I know you can't tighten it up too much or this is going to be hard to do. Uh, I love having a quick release. Absolutely love having a quick release, especially with a bipod this expensive. You're going to want to take it from this rifle to that rifle to that rifle and get as much use out of it as you can. That being said, the button can be a little hard to get to if you over tighten it on the rifle. The little adjuster here on the bottom it can be a little bit hard to get to because you're kind of coming at it like this when you're, when you're trying to adjust it. But the design with the, with the four points and the real deep gouges, real deep shaping in here, it helps you to get a lot of grip on it. And that's important when you're trying to tighten it down and get rid of tilt and swivel. I like that the feet are replaceable, very easy to do. You just need something small to depress that little button in there and you can swap your legs out. I like that they have extensions. You can stack your extensions. You can also, if you really need to, <laughs> for a couple of bucks, get yourself some dowels and stick them in there for that nice height thing. 45 degrees. You guys have been watching my videos, you know I am a super fan of 45 degrees. This is where I live, this is my home. And I tell you, I've been shooting off these for many years and they do a good job. They hold the rifle steady and stable, and I take my shots. And if they didn't, then I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference between these two, the V8 and the PSR. And I did see just a slight accuracy difference with the PSR. What else on the pros and cons? Let's see. Oh, I mentioned about the knurling. I don't need to go into that. It's awesome. Uh, the top hat design um, really allows you to grab this and move it down. That's a good thing. The button here to move the legs back and forth, it's tall enough to where you can just push in this area and you know you've got it and you can manipulate your legs how you need to. Uh, so that's good. On a lot of bipods I've seen, I get some uh, flex, some uh, slop at the pivot point. I don't have that with this. I'll tell you guys something else, this might be like a you know, a personal thing, but one of the other things I like about the Atlas Bipod just happened to come about. I mean, just because of the way it's designed and its size and stuff, it just happened to be that if I'm grabbing my rifle and I need a bipod, I can literally just grab this no matter how it is. Oh, let me grab it like that and slap it on my rifle just that fast. Same thing for taking it off and I got to swap out rifles, bingo, and I'm good to go. And it's just that ability how com comfortable it is. It's almost ergonomic where you kind of grab it like this and just send it home and you're off to the races. It's a very fast install. Like I said, might be a small, silly little thing, but I like it. One more thing to mention, guys, is that the V8 and the PSR are available with a little bit longer legs. If that's something that you're looking for, check them out. Well, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this review on the Atlas V8 and PSR bipods. As a quick reminder, I'm on Airgun 101 now, so you can go over there and check out my other videos, as well as videos from other top-notch shooters. Something you may not know is that all my videos premiere on Airgun 101 first. 
One of the reasons that is, is because of the way YouTube has demonetized so much that's related to anything shooting. That being said, there is a way to donate to my channel, paypal.me forward slash Tomcat Air Guns. If you want to send me a donation, I really would appreciate it and it would really go a long way to helping me maintain and keep this channel going. As always guys, happy shooting and thanks for watching.